budget, as you've heard from Mike, um, is uh, includes about a reduction of a little bit over uh, 3% in the state general fund, a reduction of $866 million. And obviously, most of that is clearly related to the loss of our Federal Recovery Act funds. And what's important to note is, um, although the federal funds came in at two different streams, one was the state fiscal stabilization and the other one was through the Medicaid match, those funds were sprinkled throughout <coughs> the budget. So there are a number of lines, as we'll see, particularly the Department of Public Welfare that didn't actually, are not Medicaid lines, but had ERA funds to help replace state funds. And one of the tricks in this budget, as you are looking at your line items, is you have to add up the state funds and the ERA funds, and as we'll hear later on, the tobacco settlement funds in order to understand exactly what's in the budget. Uh, Two other things that are not included in, in the budget. Um, one is the sale of the state liquor stores, or the wine and spirit shops, as, we're, as we talk about them. Um, and I, I thought this was very interesting because this had been a high priority. And the governor talked about this, but he talked about the sale of the, of the shops, not in economic terms, but in more ideological terms, that this is not something that the government ought to be in. And quite honestly, that signaled to me um, that uh, the People's Administration have given up on the economic argument, that they understand that the revenue that comes in probably is so great that it doesn't make sense from an economic standpoint to pursue this, and that there are other, uh, other goals to, uh, upon which to make the case. And there'll be a privatization task force that will be set up, a commission. Um, and that's very important, and as we'll hear today, uh, we've got actually a workshop on this. Um, there are a number of areas in, uh, in state delivery that uh, could potentially be subject to private control, and so it's important to keep an eye on those things and get an understanding about what that means in terms of cost, but also in terms of, 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 of serving individuals. And the other thing that is not in the budget, as you know, is any type of tax on gas prices <coughs> and Marcellus Shale, although there will be, again, a commission to study the Marcellus. So really, overall, when you, when, you, when you go through the line items and look at the budget, you have some interesting priorities that are identified. On the one hand, we've seen uh, proposed very large cuts to pre-K through 12 education but 11% overall, uh, that translates into over a billion dollars, uh, more than a half, 50% of higher education, and not unexpectedly cuts in the Department of Community and Economic Development. Some of those are, some of those are good. They certainly are a reduction <coughs> in, in um, expenditures. There are some program consolidations there, um, and there was also, uh, once again, the loss of, um, of the WAM or the Legislative Directed uh, Economic Development Programs. We'll see if that stays in. Um, on the flip side, there's more investment in public safety. <coughs> the corrections budget receives an increase in part to make up for federal dollars that went into corrections. The Department of Parole has an increase and there's an increase in the state police both in the general fund and also in the um, uh, the motor license fund. So we see a real emphasis on public safety and including certain and improving services on public safety. Um, and uh, we did see here some some talk about the the value of looking at um, um, reduced reliance on prisons. Um, we haven't necessarily seen that reflected in the budget. <coughs> so in terms of education. Uh, You've heard about an, uh, uh, just over $1 billion, about $1.1 billion cut from the basic education line, and, or from, cut from basic education. And this really comes in four areas. And what's important to note is that um, this is all funds that are allocated right now by school districts that they will need to make up in some form or another. There's a 10% reduction in the basic education line, which is the big one. And again, you heard me say this for the past two years, so I'll say it again. Most, all of the increase uh, in, edu in basic education over the past two years, and many of the programs that you care about um, 
have all come from general fund education spending. Um, over the past two years, the General Assembly has cut the basic education line, filled it in with federal dollars. Those dollars have gone away and they have not been replaced. Uh, so that is a, a big problem. The budget also cuts about $259 million from the accountability block grants. Those are dollars that go out to school districts that they can use for one of 11 different purposes that funds a lot of early childhood programs in the state. Uh, the Educational Assistance Program, which is a tutoring program, actually was started under the Bridge Administration, is completely eliminated. Uh, the other thing that happened is that there's a proposed elimination of a significant chunk of money, $224 million, for, uh, in charter school subsidies. Right now, school districts get additional funds to help replacing some of the funds that they lose when students move into to charter schools, and that's completely eliminated. So what we see is a big hit to local school districts. Um, on the flip side of that, the governor has also proposed a number of changes that you've probably read about um, that would uh, require, would do things like eliminating the, um, the increment for teachers who receive a master's degree and some changes that would require um, school districts to, um, to actually change off the Act One uh, referendum process now and, and require that those school budgets be approved by the voters, um, which could end up having voters approved taxing themselves, uh, which is likely to occur. Yeah. Uh, special education, again, the special education line item over which there's been a lot of debate recently has been flat funded for three years. Nothing has happened with that. There's less, some legislation to try and redo the formula. That has not occurred yet. And for the third year in a row, um, that general fund line is, um, is um, flat funded. Uh, there were some substantial federal um, funds that went directly to school districts for special education costs. Those are also gone this year. Now, those were temporary schools. Understood, they weren't going to be there forever. Nonetheless, um, it's still a loss of a significant amount of funding. Uh, the good news in this program is that early intervention in the um, in the pre K twelve system three to five um, will have an increase. In early childhood. This is my favorite picture. It looks like summer. Isn't that nice? Um, Maybe think of what's to come. Um, for early childhood, what we've seen is essentially the two large programs, Pre-K Counts and Head Start, uh, in the Department of Education are level funded at their at their budgetary freeze level. You know, the um, accountability block grant was eliminated. That really goes to fund um, many Pre-K classrooms and much of the full day <coughs> kindergarten in the state. And so, for example, it's just an example that uh, 17,000 children in, in the city of Philadelphia um, are in full day kindergarten is paid for with the accountability block grant. So we will see uh, some big changes <coughs> there. And again, more pressure on school districts to come up with the funds to maintain, to maintain these programs. On the child care side, child care was essentially level funded. There's a slight reduction in some federal funds, um, and it's not clear where that's going to come, come from um, moving forward. <coughs> So what we see in the budget is a continued um, a reduction in the literacy portion of the budget. The state library received another cut, about 7%, but the state library's funding has been reduced by 54% since the recession started. Uh, for the first year in several years, the public library subsidy, which goes out to all of the libraries across the, the Commonwealth, was held harmless, but that's still down about 30% from, from pre-recessionary levels. And adult literacy, once again, takes a hit, 46% since 2008-9. So we've seen a real defunding of the literacy programs 